of silence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin in two minutes. Please make your way to your seats and silence your cell phones for the duration of the ceremony. Current Army officers and civilians, please remove your badges. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony is about to begin. Please take your seats. During the ceremony, please ensure all aisles are clear. 
At the conclusion of today's dedication ceremony, there will be a live fire demonstration. Hearing protection was placed on each of your seats and handed out upon arrival. Thank you. Please stand while Mrs. Rosella Hirsch, Private Robert Booker's sister, Ms. Freddie Jackson, Staff Sergeant Stevon Booker's mother, and Mrs. Kim Talley Armstead, Staff Sergeant Booker's sister, are escorted to their seats. Please remain standing for the arrival of the official party. The posting of the colors by a combined color guard led by Sergeant Avery Ponder of the 3rd Infantry Division. The playing of the Nanth National Anthem by the 3rd Infantry Division Band led by Chief Timothy Rogers and the invocation by Reverend June Jeffries.
Good morning. Just before we pray, I just want to take a moment to recognize the moment in time in which we stand. We are given an opportunity today to blend the sands of lives where there's no separation for today as we honor Private Robert Booker and honor Staff Sergeant Stephon Booker. We honor together. We stand here unified as one, many worlds apart, but today as one. These men both paid an ultimate price. And so we honor their service and we honor the families from which they come. This nation is standing in a time when we need to remember that we are more united than we are separated. For we all love and live as to one. Just let me read one scripture and then pray. In the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 36 to 40, when the disciples asked Jesus a question, they said, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in all of the law? And Jesus said to them that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so we stand today to say, Sergeants Booker, and Private Booker, well done, thou good and faithful servants. You have served the Lord by serving your countrymen and your world. Now let us pray. Father God, we thank you, the creator and sustainer of all life. Everything that we have and everything we ever hope to be is all in you, O oh God. You are the giver and sustainer of everything. And so, God, you created us as uniquely in your image and in your likeness. But the most significant thing about humanity is that we have the capacity to love. Love never fails. Love never dies. And love doesn't quit. So we thank you today for an opportunity to stand together in unity and in love. Having given love and received love, we are now grateful for this day, this epic moment in time where history is being made and we are eyewitnesses to the fact that you can do anything but fail. Thank you, God, for being God, for all of the hands and all of the persons who laid their hand to this task, for the doors of opportunity that were open to make this day happen, for the fact that laws were even changed and opportunity was given that it didn't have to be a certain group of people to be given the honor, the medal of honor, but now everybody who does the service receives the reward. Thank you, God. And so we give your name glory today. We give your name honor today. And we give your name praise today. For you are God all by yourself. Above you there is no other. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift that you have given us today in family and friend and faith and in fellow countrymen. We thank you for all these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. And would you join me in saying amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Jeffries. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is our honor to welcome you to the dedication ceremony for the M10 Booker Combat Vehicle. The official party consists of the Honorable Douglas R. Bush, Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology. Major General Glenn Dean, Program Executive Officer, Ground Combat Systems, and Brigadier General Jeffrey Norman, Director of the Next Generation Combat Vehicles Cross-Functional Team. We are honored to have Mrs. Rosella Hirsch, Private Booker's sister, his nephews, Daryl Hirsch, Gregory Booker, Michael Booker, Roderick Booker, Dennis Henderson, Pat Henderson, and George Morrison, his nieces, Phyllis Lynch, Beverly Dawson, Marcy Morell, 
Pamela Leggett, and Gaylene Nelson. We are also honored to have Ms. Freddie Jackson, Staff Sergeant Booker's mother, and his sister Kimberly Talley Armstead, her husband Jeffrey and their children, Jeffrey, Christina, and Alexander, their daughter, Jessica Burrell, Staff Sergeant Booker's niece, was unable to be here with us today. We are also joined by his uncle and aunt, Mr. and Mrs. Patterson, and his aunt, Eileen Hobaugh. We extend a warm welcome to Mr. Young Bang, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for, De for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology. Ms. Jennifer Swanson, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Data, Engineering, and Software. Command Sergeant Major Bryant Hester, Army Futures Command. Command Sergeant Major Waylon Petty, United States Army Armor School. Mr. James Amato, Deputy to the Commander, Army Test and Evaluation Command. Mr. Mark Colley, Director of the Integrated Logistics Support Center, TACOM Lifecycle Management Command. Mr. Travis Schulte, Policy Advisor for Senator Kirsten Cinema, Arizona. Ms. Adina Bradford, Wounded Warrior Fellow, and Mr. Jonathan Pastore, Constituent Service Representative, both from Congressman David Trone's office, Maryland. Also attending are numerous family members, friends, and soldiers from 2nd Brigade, 3rd Infantry Division, and Task Force 164 Armor, who served alongside Staff Sergeant Booker. These include his former brigade commander, retired General David Perkins, his former brigade executive officer, retired Lieutenant General Eric Wesley, his former battalion command sergeant major, William Barnello, and his former company commander and first sergeant, retired Brigadier General Andrew Helms, and retired first sergeant Robert Hay. Also in attendance is retired Brigadier General Larry Burris, company commander within Task Force 164. Also attending are the 3rd Infantry Division Deputy Commanding General for Maneuver, Brigadier General Jeremy Wilson, and the 3rd Infantry Division Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Jonathan Reffer. We also have the current Battalion Commander and Battalion Command Sergeant Major for the 1st Battalion, 64th Armored Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Cole Pinheiro, and Command Sergeant Major Gregory Swayer in attendance with us today. We are also honored to have members of the 34th Infantry Division, Command Sergeant Major Joshua Luck, 133rd Infantry Regiment Sergeant Major Lucas Queck, members of the 82nd Airborne Division, as well as many current and former general officers and members of the Senior Executive Service. In addition to our honored guests, we extend a sincere welcome to all Gold Star family members, soldiers past and present, Army leaders and civilians, and so many friends and family members who took time to help celebrate this significant moment for Private Robert D. Booker and Staff Sergeant Stefan A. Booker. Today is about honoring their legacies, but also about the lives of the soldiers and family members touched by their contributions to the Army. Today, on behalf of the United States Army and of a grateful nation, we recognize two soldiers divided by time, joined by their common name and valor. Private Robert D. Booker, Medal of Honor recipient, 133rd Infantry Regiment, 34th Infantry Division, who perished in service to his country during World War II. And Staff Sergeant Stefan A. Booker, Distinguished Service Cross Recipient, 164 Armor, 3rd Infantry Division, who perished in service to his country during Operation Iraqi Freedom. It is an honor for me to welcome you welcome you today to this dedication ceremony, celebrating these two courageous warriors who sacrificed everything for their brothers in arms. Their heroism and dedication to duty will forever be remembered through the Army's newest combat vehicle. Today we celebrate and honor these two brave individuals and their families. At this time, we would like to invite Mr. Douglas R. Bush, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Acquisition, Logistics, and Technology, to honor these families and highlight the modernization transformation our Army is currently undergoing. Mm. 
Oh, what a wonderful day. And uh, first, let me thank uh, everyone who uh, did all the hard work to have this amazing ceremony come together, and our color guard and all the other folks who made uh, did all the work to uh, bring us here together to honor these two American heroes. So please, round of applause for the team. <clears throat> so thank you for extending me the humbling, very humbling, yet exciting opportunity to honor the brave and selfless legacies of two outstanding soldiers. World War II Medal of Honor recipient, Private Robert D. Booker, and Staff Sergeant Stevon A. Booker awarded the Distinguished Service Cross after succumbing to injuries sustained in Operation Iraqi Freedom. So the M-10 combat vehicle, formerly known as the Mobile Protected Firepower Program, is an extension of their proud legacy. It is named for two gallant patriots who made the ultimate sacrifice while fighting for our nation. And as uh, our uh, wonderful introductory speaker mentioned, we have a huge range of family members here um, from both families, which is wonderful. But in particular, I wanted to welcome uh, Ms. Rosella Booker Hirsch, Private Robert Booker's sister, ma'am, thank you for being here, and uh, Ms. Freddie Jackson, uh, Staff Sergeant Stevon Booker's mother. Um, thank you very much both for being here, leading your big family groups, and allowing us to honor your heroes today. Also attending, of course, as mentioned, are numerous other family members, Soldiers for 164, the 3rd Infantry Division, and then many other distinguished leaders with a connection to these two warriors and heroes, either in the past or today. The attendance of so many and such important guests from across the nation is a testament to the love and high esteem for which these two heroes are held by those who knew them. Now, many of you are familiar with the exemplary accomplishments of Private and Sergeant, uh, Staff Sergeant Booker, but they bear repeating today in a little more detail. On June 9, 1942, uh, Robert Booker answered his nation's call to defend freedom during World War II. He joined the U.S. Army at Fort Crook, Nebraska. After basic training, he was assigned to the 133rd Infantry Regiment of the 34th Infantry Division, which was fighting in Tunisia as part of the Allied North Africa Campaign. On April 9, 1943, his unit was fighting at the Fonduk Pass in Tunisia. Two enemy machine guns began firing on his unit. Despite this hail of bullets, Private Booker crossed nearly 200 yards of open field, the length of two football fields, carrying a machine gun and a box of ammunition. Once he reached his intended location, Private Booker set up his machine gun and began firing on the enemy. After being shot and injured, he continued firing his weapon, eventually destroying the first enemy machine gun. As he turned to fire on the second enemy machine gun, he was shot again, this time fat fatally. Before he died, however, Private Booker continued to encourage his squad and help direct their fire. So Private Booker acted without regard for his own safety. His initiative and courage is an example of the highest standard of self-sacrifice and fidelity to duty. He was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor and Purple Heart in 1944. Staff Sergeant Stevon A. Booker enlisted in the Army in 1987. He served in Operation Desert Storm and then later, Operation Iraqi Freedom. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, he served with the 164 Armored Battalion, part of the 3rd Infantry Division. During the now famous Thunder Run, Staff Sergeant Booker's unit led an offensive armored attack into Baghdad on April 5, 2003, which subsequently resulted in the collapse of the Saddam Hussein regime. During the raid, Staff Sergeant Booker's platoon came under heavy small arms and rocket-propelled grenade fire. Staff Sergeant Booker reacted immediately. He notified his chain of command of the situation, returned fire with his mounted machine gun, and assured his crew that they would make it to their objective. When his machine gun malfunctioned, Staff Sergeant Booker disregarded his personal safety and took a position exposed, prone, on the top of his tank, engaging the enemy with his personal weapon. While still engaged by heavy enemy fire, he maintained communication with his platoon, accurately destroyed an enemy vehicle, effectively protected his platoon flank for five miles 
under fire, Sergeant Booker continued to engage the enemy and protect his platoon while remaining exposed. He was struck several times and killed during this period. He was posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for his heroic actions that day in combat. Private Booker and Staff Sergeant Booker both took great risks to ensure their fellow soldiers were supported by effective fire in the thick of battle. The M10 Booker is precisely designed to fill this role, to supply devastating firepower and supportive infantry in the thick of the fight. It is light enough to be transported where needed. It is fast enough and agile enough to accompany troops anywhere they go. It is powerful enough with its 105 millimeter cannon to destroy enemy, any, any enemy it encounters. Getting M10 Booker into the hands of our soldiers has been a high priority for the previous administration Army leadership and this administration's Army leadership. Important continuity. I want to thank a very large, very spread out, diverse Army team of professionals for getting this job done in remarkable time. The team at Program Executive Office Ground Combat Systems, led by Major General Glenn Dean, he'll speak briefly, worked closely with the industry on this project. They also worked in concert with the Next Generation Combat Vehicles Cross-Functional Team, currently led by Brigadier General Jeffrey Norman, who will also speak. And that teamwork showed that the Army, when we are all pointed in the same direction, we are unified and we are working together, can do anything. The whole team put the M10 Booker through a rapid and intensive development process, employing competitive bidding, thorough prototyping, and very importantly, all along the way, hands-on evaluation by our soldiers who will operate this terrific vehicle. And thanks to the use of new authorities from Congress, and it's a pleasure to have several uh, staff members from Congress here, they were able to take the M10 Booker from the start of the program to low rate production in just four years. That is less than half the time it normally takes, about 10 years, to accomplish such a task. And here we are today. This brings us to this fantastic moment where we can honor these two heroes, but also honor the thousands of people in the Army, of today's Army, who worked so hard to get this vehicle on the edge of being deployed to our combat troops. And so far, we already have received three production models of the 350 total planned vehicles ready to go in the hands of our soldiers. So like Private Booker and Staff Sergeant Booker, the M10 is proving quick to join the fight and protect soldiers. Like both of those heroes, it will be right there in combat, lending potent firepower to protect soldiers and blast a path forward to victory. So today, we formally dedicate the M10 Booker in Private Booker and Staff Sergeant Booker's honor. May its performance on the battlefield keep their legacies and memories alive. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bush. The M10 Booker is the Army's newest combat vehicle and will no doubt bring a new level of lethality to our infantry forces and allow our soldiers to move out at a faster pace, protecting the assaulting force. Now we would like to invite Brigadier General Jeffrey Norman to share some insight on how the M10 Booker will serve in our Army and within our, our, our infantry formations. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, as was mentioned, today's about two things. To welcome a new capability that will help our soldiers win our nation's wars and to name that vehicle in honor of two American heroes. As Honorable Mush mentioned a moment ago, the courageous actions of Private Booker and Staff Sergeant Booker inspire us today. Those actions took place almost 60 years to the day from one another, both in April, one in 1943, and one in 2003. Sadly, very few veterans of World War II, our greatest generation, including those from the campaigns in North Africa, are still with us uh, to bear witness to the actions of Private Booker that day firsthand. But we are very lucky to have many of Staff Sergeant Booker's teammates from Task, Six, Task Force 164 Armor here today. I'd like to ask Brigadier General Andy Hilms, his company commander in April 2003, to come up here and tell us a little bit more about Staff Sergeant Booker.
Well, good morning, everybody. I cannot begin to tell you how appropriate that we are here right now on a live fire range with an M10 Booker at Redcon 1 ready to negotiate Firebox 1. It is just a fitting venue uh, for this ceremony. And I tell you that because Staff Sergeant Devon Booker looked, acted, and sounded like the Abrams tank that he commanded in every way. I sincerely mean this. He was both literally and physically just like a tank. For starters, you always heard Staff Sergeant Booker well before you saw him. He was very loud. I remember walking our tank line alone late one night in Kuwait. It was just prior to the invasion, and my solitude did not last very long because I could hear Booker's booming voice spitting out fire commands into the desert night from inside his tank. So I, I climbed up on the turret. Uh, I peered through the cupola, you know, looked down at him and his crew inside of the turret, and he was just putting them through, through crew drills rep repetitiously over and over again. And he looked up at me, he smiled, he winked at me, didn't say a word, he just kept training his crew. The invasion was looming closer. We, we knew it at that point that we were, we were gonna go into Iraq. And Staff Sergeant Booker did not want to have a slow or indecisive crew. And so his voice continued to pierce the night as I walked back to my command post. Tanks are also lethal and precise. American tank crews can reach out and destroy enemy vehicles nearly three kilometers away. And Steve's competence in precision tank gunnery had put him on my radar well before I, I became his company commander. He had spent several years as a tank gunner. He had shot dozens of gunneries, almost all of those on leader tanks. The gunners on leader tanks are, are hand-picked. Uh, and he had even scored a perfect score of 1,000 on tank table eight, which is an extremely rare feat. And Lieutenant Bobby Ball is here. He can attest, but because of that competence, Sergeant Booker gave his leaders a lot of advice almost all of which was unsolicited. <laughs> in combat, though, his, his video clearly matched his audio. He was a man on fire. And there is a video, a home video, that you can, you can actually find it online um, of Steve's final mission. And the devastating volume of fire that was coming out of Alpha 1-3, another episode, his tank, uh, is, is, is clearly obvious. There's, there's one segment in particular. You can see an enemy soldier emerge out of a bunker from the side of the road, several hundred yards off the, the highway, uh, fires an RPG at one of our vehicles, and then right as that, that enemy soldier is ducking back into what he thinks is the safety of his bunker, the, the bunker explodes because of an MPAT round that Sergeant Booker and his gunner, Sergeant David Gibbons, had fired into it. And I can tell you dozens of stories like that, uh, only involving Alpha 1-3 from, from nearly three weeks continuous of nonstop combat. And as we moved further into the heart of Baghdad, and as we adapted to the reduced standoff distance from the threat, Steve grabbed his M4 carbine, and he leaned out of that protective cupola, fully exposing his torso to protect the backside, the vulnerable side, of his tank. Steve knew how to get every weapon that he had into the fight. Steve Booker was lethal and precise. Tanks also have uh, very thick armor. Uh, you could say they're hard. And Steve Booker, I would tell you, he was a hard man. He was absolutely the last non-commissioned officer in Alpha Company that I think any of our soldiers would go to for a hug. <laughs> With the possible exception of First Sergeant Hay, who's, who's here as well today. But yes, Steve was, was not a kinder, gentler NCO, but I would tell you that like a good piece of armor, man, did he protect his crew. 
During the first week of the invasion, we were in a blocking position at the base of a bridge just on the outskirts of the holy city of Najaf. And I watched from, I was maybe 50 yards away, and I watched an RPG round come flying across the river, and it, it struck the front slope of, of Steve's tank, and it, it bounced harmlessly off the, the, front, the front slope of the tank. But, you know, he, I told you, he's loud. I could hear Steve shouting uh, through my own, ear, you know, hearing protection that I was wearing as, as he raced his tank up onto the crown of that bridge. And then what, what happened, he laid down the, the longest, angriest burst of coax machine gun fire into the far side of the river that I think I had ever witnessed. So I pulled him aside a little bit later. I want to talk about the engagement. I want to ask him what he saw and, 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 and you know, what, what he thought we needed to do next. And uh, I didn't get very far because he was so ticked off. And because mom's here, I'm not going to use all the, the colorful words. But he literally could not get past the fact that someone had tried to harm his crew. He kept saying it over and over again, sir, they were trying to hurt my crew. And uh, the conversation really didn't go anywhere. He, he was so mad. And to him, it was personal. There was nobody that was going to penetrate the armor of this non-commissioned officer and harm his crew. The final point I would make about tanks is tanks are redundant systems. If you're going to try and, and take out a tank, then you better pack a lunch, you better bring some friends, maybe a Snickers bar, um, but it's going to take a while. And there's a lot of Spartan and Desert Rogue veterans that are here today who will happily attest to the savage beatings that our vehicles took, but also the remarkable way that they kept moving and shooting in really, really tough circumstances. And that's, that's truly a shout out to the incredible work that goes on here at Aberdeen. It's vitally important. But Steve's redundancy was his final gift to all of us. He was one of the precious few combat veterans that we had in our company in 2003. And he knew full well why he needed to conduct those battle drills in his, in his turret back in Kuwait. As he fell back in his turret, mortally wounded, and with our company in a bit of a tight spot, because we were taking casualties at another location, the redundant system of this armor non-commissioned officer immediately kicked in without hesitation and without delay. And I will tell you that even in the agony of that gut-wrenching moment, I will tell you my heart swelled with pride because Sergeant First Class Ronald Gaines, who's here, Steve's platoon sergeant, immediately and succinctly reported that Sergeant Gibbons had already assumed command of Alpha 1-3, and that PFC Aaron Hofer and Private Joseph Gillum, also members of the crew, had reconfigured for three-man crew operations. It was like clockwork. There was no delay, no pause, nothing. It was immediate and exact. And they did all of that while they were aiding their wounded tank commander. That's exactly how Steve had trained them. There was no drop off in the fight from Alpha 1-3. Staff Sergeant Booker, like a good tank, he had a backup plan and a system for everything. So the M10 Booker, it bears a fine name that embodies what a tank is, and it provides a lofty standard to emulate for the armor crewmen who will fight from it, starting with Captain Ledbetter and her troopers. It's equally fitting that this name also honors Private Robert Booker, a legendary infantryman, representing the powerful nucleus and the center synergy of the combined arms team. Armor and infantry are at their very best when they're paired together. And it's fittingly named as well after a non-commissioned officer and a junior enlisted soldier who are the strength and the heart of the armor and infantry professions, so the infantry branches. So I hope that the M10 Booker will faithfully serve our nation well, loud, lethal, precise, protective, and a redundant system of systems. Rock of the Marne, send me, mission first, men always, Wild Bunch Forever, 
thank you for allowing me to share these stories with you. Thanks, Andy. Uh, just an awesome uh, recollection. Thank you so much for that. As long as we have uh, soldiers like Private Robert Booker and Staff Sergeant Booker to emulate, and we provide them the right equipment, I know our Army and ultimately our nation will prevail. So I want to briefly highlight how the vehicle uh, that we see in front of us, named after those heroes, came to be. So several years ago, capability developers at the Maneuver Center down at Fort Moore uh, and infantry leaders in the 82nd Airborne at Fort Liberty in North Carolina laid out the requirements for a mobile, protected, firepower capability, uh, an assault gun, uh, as Honorable Bush described earlier. The 82nd last had tracked armored vehicles in their formations in 1997 when their final M551 Sheridan unit uh, was inactivated. A new vehicle was needed to apply immediate, long-range, direct fires that could defeat enemy prepared uh, positions in bunkers, as well as enemy light armored vehicles during offensive and defensive operations. Over the course of the next several years, operational units and soldiers were at the center of the design and experimentation to get this vehicle right. In fact, the 82nd Airborne Division did three rigorous experiments with surrogate vehicles, both at Fort Liberty and at Fort Johnson, Louisiana, at a combat training center rotation. Those events showed that an airborne unit armed with a light armored platform was more lethal and destructive on the battlefield than without that platform, and that the uh, unit, the armored unit, didn't burden the brigade. Around this same time, the Secretary and the Chief uh, confirmed the value of mobile protected power, firepower uh, and designated it as one of the Army's signature modernization programs. So after that, the competitive prototypes were put through their paces in a year-long, innovative and rigorous soldier vehicle assessment, both at Fort Liberty uh, in North Carolina and at Fort Stewart, Georgia. That feedback uh, that came from soldiers, non-commissioned officers, armored and infantry leaders was invaluable uh, to uh, refining the design and providing additional insights which led to the vehicle that you see in front of you today. This vehicle is light enough for two of them to fit inside a C-17 transport aircraft and deploy worldwide on short notice. Upon landing, these vehicles are ready to fight in minutes, not within hours, but within minutes of rolling off the ramp. In the offense, the vehicle is agile and mobile so it can cross most of the world's bridges and roads and maneuver rapidly off-road in difficult terrain where our infantry excel. It's well protected against varied threats and has sights and optics that enable it uh, to detect and identify targets at long ranges. And it has a gun, a big gun, a 105 cannon, as well as two machine guns uh, that provide the precision, all-weather firepower to support the infantry. The M10 Booker and our future mobile protected firepower companies and battalions will be a key element in the Army's combined armed team, just like uh, Andy described. So speaking of teams, it takes a team of teams to make this possible. Industry partners delivering a first-class vehicle. Leaders and experts from Training and Doctrine Command. Leaders from Forces Command, like Lieutenant Colonel Martinelli, Captain Ledbetter, First Sergeant Cohn, who are going to lead the initial formations. An exceptional program office led by Mr. David Dopp and Lieutenant Colonel Pete George. And professional testers from across the Army's Test and Evaluation Command. On behalf of the maneuver proponent at Fort Moore and our cross-functional team in Detroit, I want to thank them all for their continued dedication to this program. We're certain that the M10 combat vehicle will honor the legacy of two distinguished soldiers, one from the armor community and the other from the infantry. It will add much needed capability to our light formations. Put simply, the M10 provides the mobile protected firepower needed today and what our army needs to fight and win in the future. Thank you. We invite Mrs. Rose Hirsch and Ms. Freddie Jackson to the stage to receive the Order of St. George on behalf of Private Booker and Staff Sergeant Booker.
Would all soldiers who have previously been awarded the Order of St. George please stand? These individuals have been called forward to receive the knighthood in the Honorable Order of St. George Silver Medallion. In 1986, the United States Cavalry and Armor Association established the Honorable Order of St. George to recognize the very best tankers and cavalrymen among its members. <clears throat> to all here present, know ye that Private Booker and Staff Sergeant Booker, having been recognized for long and honorable service to armor and cavalry, are hereby admitted as distinguished knights in the Order of St. George Silver Medallion. They will now receive their knighthood. At this time, we would like Mr. Douglas R. Bush to join Major General Dean and Brigadier General Norman. We would also like to have Mr. Michael Booker, Private Robert D. Booker's eldest nephew, and Mrs. Kim Talley Armstead, Staff Sergeant Stefan A. Booker's sister to the stage. On behalf of the United States Army, the Private and Staff Sergeant Booker families will now be presented with a plaque honoring their sacrifice and their lifelong contributions to the M10 Booker's legacy. The plaque reads, in honor of two soldiers divided by time but joined by their common name and valor. Your family's sacrifices can never be repaid. But today, the courage and bravery of Robert and Stefan are forever remembered and honored by the United States Army. After today, Private and Staff Sergeant Booker's valor and dedication will be in the hearts of the generations of soldiers the M10 Booker will support. At this time, we kindly request the immediate family members for both Booker families to join their family on stage. We'd also like to welcome Doc, uh, Mr. David Dopp, Project Lead, Future Battle Platforms, and Lieutenant Colonel Pete George, Product Manager for the M10 Booker, to the stage, as the families will now present both gentlemen with their state flags. On behalf of Private Robert D. Booker's family, Mr. Dopp will now receive a flag from Governor Jim Pillen of Nebraska. This flag from the state of Nebraska was flown over the state capitol in Lincoln on March 12, 2024, in honor of the M10 Booker Program's contributions to the United States Army.
On behalf of Staff Sergeant Stevon Booker's family, Lieutenant Colonel George will be presented with a flag from Governor Jim Shapiro of Pennsylvania. The flag of the state of Pennsylvania was flown over the state capitol in Harrisburg on March 13, 2024, in honor of the M10 Booker Program's contributions to the United States Army. Thank you. At this time, we kindly ask for all members to return to their seats. The narratives of these two valiant soldiers perfectly illustrate the essential role of the M10 Booker combat vehicle within the Army. Private Booker's sacrifice, laying down his life to shield his infantry squad from overwhelming mortar, artillery, and machine gun fire, embodies the very essence of the M10 Booker mission. Meanwhile, Staff Sergeant Booker's sacrifice, courageously putting his life on the line, to protect his crew from atop his Abrams tank exemplifies the armored platform's ability to provide crucial fire support to infantry units. To speak more about how their valiant stories of heroism link to the Army's future, we would like to ask Major General Glenn Dean to come to the podium. Well, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, our great Gold Star Booker families and members of the greater Team M10 Booker. Thank you for attending today. I want to provide a special thanks to our, our real hosts here, the Aberdeen Test Center, as well as the 3rd Infantry Division Band and, and Color Guard and all the veterans from 3rd Infantry Division are, who are here today to make uh, this opportunity happen. It's not the normal thing for a program office whose mission it is to deliver combat equipment um, to do this sort of uh, event. But it's truly an honor to share this transition with you today as we take a new vehicle and formally mark it as part of an enduring Army legacy. You've heard about the two great heroes and their deeds and why are they are so deserving of eternal recognition and how their service and sacrifice embody the very mission of the M10 Booker Combat Vehicle, crewed by armor soldiers enabling the advance of their infantry comrades. Most soldiers fade into history, their deeds unremembered, but their legacy lives on in the symbols that they wear, the colors that they carry, and the units that endure. The symbol painted on the vehicle in front of you honors the legacy of two storied combat divisions in which Robert and Stevon Booker served. The Red Bull honors the 34th Infantry Division. Attack! 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 A National Guard unit originally composed of soldiers from Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska, whose combat honors run from World War I to Iraq and Afghanistan. The blue and white pay homage to the 3rd Infantry Division, Rock of the Marne, a regular army formation whose battle honors also run from World War I to Iraq and Afghanistan. The palm trees recall the deserts of North Africa and the Middle East, where both divisions served and where Private and Staff Sergeant Booker gave their lives. A bunker, the vehicle's primary target, is prominent, as are the cross thunderbolts, a historical symbol of the armored community as the combat arm of decision. The designation M10 is also a link to the past. Much as today's vehicle, the original M10 of World War II fame was heavily armed and highly mobile. It was intended as a tank destroyer, but served in the infantry support role in Italy and the Pacific, the same role envisioned for today's M10. The custodians of this legacy today are the members of Team Booker, the soldiers and civilians who have labored to make the vehicle in front of you a reality. 
They include the combat developers of the Maneuver Center of Excellence who first envisioned the idea of mobile protected firepower, to the Army Futures Command's Next Generation Combat Vehicle Cross-Functional Team who drove it forward as an Army modernization priority, to the Army's Program Office for Mobile Protected pa Firepower, now M10 Booker, who pushed forward through competition to select the vehicle in front of you, where from the white-hot forges of Water Valley and Rock Island arsenals, members of the Army's Tank Automotive and Armaments Command drew forth cannons to serve of its, as its armament. From welding centers in Merrill, Michigan and the Joint Systems Manufacturing Center in Lima, Ohio, came armored steel hulls and turrets. Joined with thousands of components so sourced from all across America, the talented artisans of General Dynamics Land Systems assembled it at Anniston Army Depot in Alabama. Its raw form was hammered into shape through exacting tests by the professionals of the Army Test and Evaluation Command at places like the Yuma Proving Ground in Arizona, the Aberdeen Test Center where you sit today, and a year-long soldier assessment at Fort Liberty, North Carolina. One yet major crucible remains to temper this weapon. It will be placed into the hands of the 82nd Airborne Division's M10 Booker Test Detachment for a grueling operational test that will turn a mere vehicle into an integrated warfighting capability. And at the end, that team will form the core of the 1st M10 Booker Battalion who will stand ready to deploy, fight, and win when the nation calls. The modern battlefield is a lonely, empty, and dangerous place. To prevail, soldiers need more than weapons. They need the indomitable will and the boundless confidence that comes from knowing that they do not sacrifice needlessly or alone. With today's dedication, we imbue this vehicle with the honor of units past, with the courage of its namesake heroes, and with the dedication of those professionals who brought it into being so that the soldiers who take it into battle in the future know that they do so backed by the strength of a nation. Now, for the first time in more than 20 years, we will formally dedicate the newest member of the Army's combat vehicle fleet, the M10 Booker. We will ask Private Booker's sister, Ms. Rose, Mrs. Rose Hirsch, as well as his nephews, Michael Booker, Daryl Hirsch, Robert Morrison, and Dennis Henderson, and his niece, Gaylene Nelson, to come forward. We would also ask that Staff Sergeant Booker's mother, Ms. Freddie Jackson, and his sister, Mrs. Kimberly Talley Armstead, and her husband, Jeffrey, Mr. and Mrs. Patterson and Ms. Eileen Hobaugh to come to the front of the M10 Booker Combat Vehicle to join Major General Dean and Brigadier General Norman. We would also ask that Brigadier General Wilson and Command Sergeant Major Reffer from the 3rd Infantry Division and the Battalion Commander and Battalion Command Sergeant Major for the 1st Battalion 64th, Infantry, 64th Armor Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Cole Pinheiro and Command Sergeant Major Gregory Swayer join alongside Staff Sergeant Booker's family. We'd also ask that Command Sergeant Major Luck and Sergeant Major Queck from the 34th Infantry Division join Private Booker's family as we prepare for the official christening of the M10 Booker. Please direct your attention to the M10 Combat Vehicle for the official christening.
and gentlemen, on three, one, two, three. On behalf of the United States <laughs> Army, we christen the M10 Booker. You may now escort the family members back to their seats. Tying our armies past to present modernization efforts, connecting two heroic soldiers, divided yet connected through a common name and equal valor, the development and delivery of the M10 Booker does not end here. As production and operational testing continues to progress, it should not go unnoticed that many members of the 82nd Airborne Division are here with us today. At this time, we'd like to ask Captain Rachel Ledbetter, company commander of the M10 Booker Test Detachment, to come forward. So at this point, if this were an automobile, we'd hand Captain Ledbetter the keys and allow her to drive away. Uh, unfortunately, Army vehicles actually don't have ignition keys, so instead, we are going to pass her the shell casing from the first 105 millimeter cannon shell fired from a production M10 Booker. And so Captain Ledbetter, may this be a symbol of what your unit will be capable of performing with this platform and may it serve you well in battle. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us for the playing of the 34th Infantry Division and 3rd Infantry Division songs to honor Private Booker, Staff Sergeant Booker, and unit members past and present. The 82nd Airborne Division song will also be played to honor the first unit that will receive the M10 Booker later this summer for operational testing. The lyrics to these songs can be found in your program if you wish to sing along.
Ladies and gentlemen, please put in your hearing protection and direct your attention downrange to your left as you will now observe a live firing demonstration of three rounds from the Army's newest and most modernized combat vehicle, the M10 Booker. Battle carry, HEP. Please stand for the Army song and the retiring of the colors, and please remain standing for the departure of the official party.
you for your support and attendance at today's M10 Booker dedication ceremony. Now please take a moment to offer your congratulations to the Booker families at the reception immediately following. This completes today's ceremony.